Boo! Yes, I'm still alive, and that's because of this game in front of me. Hello, and welcome to another Neo Rambler video. It's a sort of combination of an update and an unboxing video, something we haven't done for quite a while. But just to bring you all up to date, while I knock the box of this game over slightly and making a horrible sound, yes, don't worry, I know I've disappeared for a week or so, um, but I'm okay. Um, I've been applying for new jobs, and it's not been going as well as I thought, but it's a competitive... Uh, market these days for labour so I've just got to keep at it and hope for the best and of course I've been playing the new Resident Evil 2 remake game and I have to say it's bloody scary. Um, just a quick bit of history about this game, um, I said before actually in the beginning of my Resident Evil 2 let's play I did of the original game that this game scared me as a kid. I remember pl uh, not playing this but watching my cousin uh, play it when I was about 9 or 10 years old, maybe 11 somewhere around that time and it terrified me because of the music and the concept of zombies taking over the town, all that stuff. And zombies have always scared me. Um, I am a dedicated kinemortophobic. Kinny is, uh, I think, Latin for movement. Uh, morto, I think, is Greek for dead, so moving dead. And then phobia is English for pussy. So, yeah, that's basically me. Um, but I did get over the fears as the years progressed because I got older. And enjoyed the original game, so I was very much looking forward to this one. And when we did get it, that's me and my sister, that is, and we started playing it together... This just brought all the nightmares back I had as a kid. It is bloody scary. And I know, I know, people will say, how could you find this scary, Neo? It's a zombie game. They've done zombies to death now. They should not be scary, but just annoying and a nuisance. And you're quite right. But somehow Capcom, even though they've been doing some shady things as of late, still know how to make things scary and still know how to put together a damn good game. And this is one of them. So if you haven't played this, or if you have played it, or watched an LP of it, or whatever's, Trust me, it's very, very, very good, as I'm sure you agree, and it has scared me. And unfortunately, I've been playing it in the evenings with my sister, and we've got a bit of free time uh, when she comes back after school and stuff. And um, yeah, I've been really slow at it, because I keep getting terrified from all the scares and the zombos and monsters. It's very good. But I won't say any more than that, but that's where I've been. Um, I'm nowhere near finishing this yet, still. Um, I'm coming towards the end of Leon's campaign, the A scenario. I'm um, in the sewer bit at the moment, so those of you who know the story, you'll know where I'm at. So I've still got a ways to go before we then have to do Claire Redfield here. So Leon and Claire, Leon S. Kennedy, Claire Redfield, those are the names of the characters. You should know this by now, if not, now you do. Um, I've still got that to play, so I'll be doing that in the evenings as well. But I hope to get at least a video or two out uh, this week and next week to keep things going on the channel. So that's where I've been, as well as job applying. Um, so let's get on with this unboxing video. So I thought I'd do something a bit different, just to break the monotonous of things, and while I've got a moment or two. Um, but before we do, actually, and I just sort of revealed it to you ever so quickly, um, I got a little thing from uh, Dark Lord Kaiser. He sent me something through the post, which says, Surprise inside, written in very fancy, swanky font on the back with his logo there as well. And I've been plugging his channel recently because he's a dear old friend of mine. And I think personally he's funnier than me, wittier than me, and is a very good Let's Player in general. He's only just started out. Um, if you haven't checked him out yet, please, please do. I'll put a link in the description of this video below to his channel, which I've been doing in my videos of late anyway. But just in case, please do. He's currently playing Punch-Out. Um, I forget the name of the DLC that was called. Dark Fist, I think it is. But he's, called, he's playing a game called Punch-Out Dark Fist, I think. That's the name of the... DLC, but whatever. But I know he's playing that game. I just think that's the name of it. And it's a very, very good LP and it's an interesting game. And he's also doing the Talus Principle, which um, I think he's uh, sort of coming towards the end of that. And he's done a little bit of The Binding of Isaac. And I'm very much looking forward to uh, what other games he's going to play in the future. So, yeah. So, thank you, old chum. I appreciate it. So, um, I did very sneakily have a slight peek on the edges here to see if it was anything personal. Because if it was, I wouldn't be able to show it on camera because I like to keep my identity relatively secret for now. Um, but it's not. I know what it is but I don't know what they are but they are in fact some cards which I'm very looking forward to having a look at so if I can just try and unpeel the sellotape here there we go oh that's not worked at all and I'm damaging the cardboard oh no what I'll do is I'll go off screen I'll uh, get rid of the sellotape and then we'll find out what these cards are so back in a moment and they're done right let's see then do, 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 do. It is some Pokemon cards because we've been playing the uh, Pokemon trading card game 2 on my channel which has been a bit of good fun I can't wait to get back into that. So let's see what cards these are. I've got a sneaking suspicion that they are Pokemon cards and that's all I know. Hey! It is what I thought it might have been simply because as I was opening it I saw the red text at the bottom. It is Imakuni's Doo Duo. Well, that is some cool ass shit, if I don't mind swearing and you don't mind listening to it. There's a bit of hair in it as well, but we shall forego that because 
you know, that's a natural thing. But yes, Imakuni's Dudua, that is so cool. Thank you very much, Dark Lord Kaiser. That's amazing. Um, we will, well, we've come into uh, the character of Imakuni in the Pokemon Trading Card Game 2 so far, but we haven't actually battled him yet, but he did pop us his trainer card. And I used to collect these as a kid. I was fascinated by this chap in the Pokemon Card Game. Looking back at it now, I don't know why, but it certainly wasn't for disturbing reasons. Let me just say that now that we know a little bit more about him. Not that he's done anything that remotely disturbing, but... He is a disturbing chap, but he's also a very good musician, had just something to do with the Pokemon card game in the past, so I don't mind. And I think he illustrated this card, if you can see there. Yes, illustrated Imakuni. He drew this picture and stuff. That's really, really cool. I like this Pokemon card. It's a promo. Um, I can't remember which set it came from, weirdly enough, but um, as you can see from the moves and the attack, I'll let you have a read of those because I need to keep this video a little pacier than usual. It's a very funny card, and you can't actually play it in an official tournament of the Pokemon Trading Card Game, but if you're playing with friends, then you can. So thank you for that, Dark Lord Koyser. That's amazing. Um, is there another card? There is. And it's the trainer card. Look at that. It's Imakuni. And I had the original Japanese copy of that years ago. Paid far too much money for it, but there is the English version of it. So that's so cool. And like I said, used to love this guy. Again, don't know why in the Pokemon Trading Card Game. Probably because he was a bit weird. Like in the Yu-Gi-Oh! Card Game, one of my favourite characters in it is, of course, Maximilian Pegasus. Because I love the tunes and the weirdness and the evils and all that. It's all good campy fun. And this guy is just campy fun, really. So thank you, Dark Lord Kaiser. That's a lovely, generous gift. I shall treasure those. And I do mean that because I love collecting bits of tack like that. Please check out his channel. He's a funny less player. Right. OK, now the main show, which we need to get on to. I'm going to have to reach over and grab it. But we are going to do an unboxing video and it is on the theme of cards. And you might have guessed it is a Yu-Gi-Oh theme thing. And it is the Yu-Gi-Oh Legendary Collection Game Board Edition. <clears throat> Amazing. Yeah, basically these are going quite cheap at the moment uh, because basically what this is is a reprint of a reprint of the original Legendary Collection. So not really that special, but for me it is because it's full of nostalgia. So basically what this is, is you get the three uh, god cards of the series. So you've got Slifer the Sky Dragon, Obelisk the Tormentor, and the Winged Dragon of Ra. Um, if you don't know what the god cards are, they're just powerful cards in the anime version of Yu-Gi-Oh. Not so powerful in the actual trading card game. And these three in particular are not actually playable, a bit like the Imakuni cards we saw. You can't actually use these in proper matches, but there are versions where you can. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just basically a celebration, I guess, or a collection of some of the original booster packs that came from the series. Isn't that nice? So yeah, we're going to open up one of these and um, have a look and see what we can get. So before we do, let's go to the back of the box. Actually, let's have a quick look at the sides of the box. It's a very nice shiny box, this. I like it. Look at that. Konami. Very evil, but still know how to do good old nostalgic Yu-Gi-Oh stuff to a degree. But anyway, there they are. And then on the back we have Treasures of the Pharaoh from the Dawn of Dueling. And there's the main character, Yami Yugi, there looking very concentrating and focused and determined to hold cards in a very peculiar position, but whatever. Um, and uh, yeah, we get some cool stuff in there. So what we get is we get six booster packs. We get the Legend of Blue Eyes, Metal Raiders, Spell Ruler, uh, Pharaoh Servants, Dark Crisis and Invasion of Chaos to open up. So that'll be good fun. You also get a game board. Um, I don't know which one do you get. I think you actually get just this board and it's double sided. I think it is. In fact, it even says a double sided game board. There's that conundrum solved, which is pretty cool. And the three god cards and the three main protagonists uh, monster cards. I think that's the right word. The, the most famous monsters. Uh, one each of Blue Eyes White Dragon, Dark Magician and Red Eyes Black Dragon. Marvellous. So we're going to unbox this, have a look at the game board in more detail, although to be fair, it pretty much is what it is. Quick look at the ga uh, god cards, which again is pretty much what it is, and those monsters. And then we're going to have a look at some booster packs and see what we get. <gasps> and also I've got a bit of a bugbear with these that a lot of um, sort of channels that do Yu-Gi-Oh! unboxings like Cyber Knight, JRB Jobber, Simply Unlucky. There's a bugbear with this sort of thing that really gets me up the wall a bit. And I'm going to explain that to you in another rambly bit before we actually carry on. But what I will do is before we do that, I shall uh, take off the cellophane wrapper, get the box opened, and then we'll uh, have a look at the contents. So, back in a moment once again. Right then, let us open the box and see what's inside. Well, we know what's inside, but let's see it for real. And here is the game board with a lovely picture of Slife of the Sky Dragon on it, which is very, very nice. It's going to be a bit difficult to get in camera shot, sadly, because my setup is very primitive, but we'll have a look nonetheless. So there he is. That was my favourite god card of the series, um, by the way. I love this guy. He just looked the coolest, and... Um, 
What I like about it as well is I remember when I was a kid, I used to obviously play this game a lot uh, when I was at school and stuff. And I managed to get a couple of these off um, a shopping channel. I think it was um, Ideal World. They were selling this in a Japanese promo booster pack for 30 quid. And I got my mum to order it for me and I gave her my pocket money for it. And I was the talk of the town or talk of the school with my little circle of friends who played Yu-Gi-Oh along with me. And then some uh, bastard nicked it because <laughs> we used to have a few thieves. And it was what it was. But although I was upset and annoyed, I wasn't too displayed or displeasured because at the end of the day it just teaches you to be careful people but yeah he was my favorite and it was cool so there we go let's have a look at it it's a very nice board by the way not bad quality which is good nice cardboardy nice and uh, shiny glossy be the right word for it there's um I, don't, I think that is dark magician of chaos or dark magician of black chaos or something like that exodia necros which i quite liked black skull dragon cool wing dragon of ra obelisk the tormentor red eyes black dragon blue eyes white dragon dark magician and yeah, not bad at all. And then on the back, we've got a very nice picture, but I can't show it to you. Ah, there you go. Of the three protagonists. Joey Wheeler with his Brooklyn accent. Uh, Yami Yugi, who's also Yugi Moto, but he's a pharaoh and he habits his body and they get onto weird stuff together. But overall, they're cool. And then the sort of, uh, I forget what the appropriate term is, it's not antagonist, like duo antagonist or something like that, where, uh, or anti uh, anti protagonist or something like that. I don't know, but it's Seto Kaiba and he's kind of like their rival stroke protagonist, really. He's just a grumpy get with lots of powerful cards and a rich company that makes everything happen in the show. Marvellous. So, yeah, not bad at all. Um, then you've got some, I don't know if you can see it very well, we've got the extra deck zone field card zone spell and trap zones not very well um printed on in fact actually i've just noticed um if you look on the game board over here you've got the different zones here so when you're playing the game you use the zones to put your cards in the right places and stuff but then if we go along the spell and trap uh, spell and uh, trap card zones you can see they've been overridden by the print of the um three protagonists they've kind of overrided it so it actually makes this game board a bit useless if you need it to guide or make your uh uh, jewels in the real world are uh, more organized <laughs> same with the monster zones that's really silly <laughs> they've overlapped the board they should have been over the top <laughs> oh well whatever it doesn't matter it's just something cool right we'll keep that in the background next thing we're going to get out of the box is our promo cards and here they are i'm sorry for the lighting by the way and again it's a very primitive setup but um, i'm sure by now if you've seen any of my unboxing videos you should know these facts right so, Obelisk the Dor Tormentor, first god card, which I think uh, Seto Kaiba has. Uh, very powerful card, actually. Um, not a bad effect at all, at least back in the day. Slide for the Sky Dragon, the one that I had. Loved him to bits. Again, not the greatest. I think he's actually the weakest, I think. But I still liked him anyway. He was cool. And then, oh, and he was uh, controlled by uh, Yami Yugi until he got all three of them in the end. And then the Winged Dragon of Ra, which was owned by Marek. Ishtar, which was kind of cool as well. He's pretty powerful, at least in the anime series. And he's had some support lately um, with the um, Duelist Pack Battle City um, box set. And I think one of the box set, he had the uh, Winged Dragon of Ra Sphere mode and Winged Dragon of Ra Phoenix mode, which was kind of cool. They weren't, uh, one was in the Battle City pack and the other one was uh, Lost Millennium, I think it was. So there you go. Kind of cool. And then, of course, Seto Kaiba's Blue Eyes White Dragon. Yami Yugi's or Yugi Moto's Dark Magician and Jerry Wheeler's Red Eyes Black Dragon. I have to say though, I don't like the artwork to these promos. I really don't. I mean, there's several artworks for all three of these cards, um, but I've always liked the original artwork from the uh, starter decks back in the day and in the uh, Western release of the anime series. I always preferred the original Dark Magician artwork where he's like purple and jumping out of a magic seal and it's got like a greeny yellowy background. And I've always preferred the original Blue Eyes White Dragon artwork again in the anime series where he looks like a sort of picture inscription sort of thing rather than an actual dragon and uh the red eyes black dragon again i preferred the original one with that as well so i don't really like these promo arts but a lot of people seem to prefer them and that's fine at the end of the day it doesn't matter this is just for nostalgia's sakes but that's my two cents on that but still very very cool and finally our booster packs i'm just going to get them out of the box separately just to make things a bit easier so we have dark crisis invasion of chaos very very nice Followed by uh, Spell Ruler and Pharaoh Servants. Very nice as well. And lastly, my two favourites. I think lots of people's favourites. Metal Raiders and The Legend of Blue Eyes White Dragon. Where it all began for the actual trading card game. Cool. But before we open these packs up, again, I'm going to get onto my pet peeve with this. And I know it's going to be annoying. So people are going, oh, he's rambling too much. Just get on with it. I will. I will. It's one more thing and then we'll crack on. 
But basically, my pet peeve is this. With the channels I mentioned earlier, and it's not necessarily specifically them, there's others as well that do it. Um, whenever they open up retro packs, uh, such as the Blue Eyes, White Dragon Pack, Metal Raiders, etc. They always seem to get confused as to whether that these are the original prints of the packs or whether these are the reprinted packs. Uh, just for your information, these are the reprinted packs. These aren't original booster packs back in the day. Um, and they always seem to get confused. They never know. They seem to go, oh, I don't know if it's an original or a reprint. Um, I don't know if it's the number of ridges here is different um and the backing here is a bit different i just don't know are these original or are these reprints blah, blah blah and i kept screaming at the videos going there is one obvious way that you can tell whether these are reprints or the original packs and it's this and if you just allow me one more second to grab the evidence at hand i have here some original booster pack wrappers of the first four sets blue eyes white dragon metal raiders magic ruler and ferris servant and the most obvious difference of these really yes the packs are a bit wider and yes if you look at the back the the uh, seal bit here is silver whereas here it's a bit different yes of course they're all valid. but the obvious thing is the bloody logo look at the logo for Yu-Gi-Oh! original logo gray faded writing reprint or new logo bright white there's the difference why is that so hard to pick out i don't know why they do it i don't know if they do it just to ham it up or be dramatic they never seem to do it i mean now they're a little bit better but they were like i can't tell is this an original pack or a repro pack i'm not sure oh well doesn't matter logos people look at the logos they've changed that's your obvious tell points as well as the print and the color and the width and the indents and backs and stuff whatever the point being is check the logo if it's white it's a reprint if it's uh, this, the grey sort of original watch I prefer, by the way, it's an original pack. Anyway, I've rambled enough. I'm going to pause the video once again because for some reason I can only record in 10 minute intervals on this phone I have. It's good, but weird. Let's get these booster packs opened up. Back in a moment. Okay, we'll go in reverse order in terms of release. So we'll start with Invasion of Chaos, Dark Crisis, Pharaoh's Servant, Spell Ruler, Metal Raiders, and Legend of Blue Eyes. And let's see what we get. I'm just doing this purely for nostalgia, and it was cheap, and I like doing unboxing videos. And, um, yeah, why not? Let's break things up a little bit. So, let's open this pack up. It doesn't really matter what the condition of these packs are, but I like to keep wrappers because I'm really sad. Right. <laughs> there we go. I might have creased the ends. That doesn't matter. Right, we have Witch Doctor of Chaos, because you can't have a Witch Doctor of Peace and Calm. It wouldn't make any sense. Rubbish. Burning Algae, trying to tell someone that there's a god in reality or something. Primal Seed, um, I guess, you know, if you want to be angry in the bedroom. Chaos End, I guess the end of Chaos, because the Witch Doctor has now got peaceful. And our rare, which is Lakunga, which I have no idea what that is. <laughs> it's a thing. Get over it. Then we've got Smashing Ground, which was that always a common? I can't remember. I guess it was. Be gone, Nave! You are inferior and you know near Rambler. And we don't want him anywhere near us. So if you know him, piss off. Gora, Turtle of Illusion. No one knows if he's real or not. I think he's alive. And Manju of the 10,000 Hands, which isn't bad, actually, if you've got a ritual card in your deck, because it allows you to summon, uh, not summon even so, but it allows you to um, get a ritual monster card or ritual spell card from your deck to your hand. Quite useful, that, even when it's flip summoned and you put it in defense mode. Okay, one rare. Disappointing, but let's continue with Dark Crisis, which I always liked, but a lot of people said this was a really rubbish booster set. I will take their word for it. I just wanted it for Exodia Necros, because I was all about Exodia back in the day. Woo! Yeah, we're well, weirdo. We've got Arsenal Summoner. Yes, Arsenal, the football team, really needs to summon some inner strength to get back into the top of the Premier League. Little wing guard. He's little. He wings, but he guards well. None of that makes any sense. Guardian K.S.T., who always was bullied at school for her stupid name. Battle Footballer, who wasn't bullied at school because he beat the crap out of you. And another rare, Great Maju Gazette. Very, very nice. Very majestic. Very fiendish. Very evil. And, oh, we've got a super rare. Hey, we've got the Band Butterfly Dagger Elmer that creates lots of, uh, uh, well, I forget what they're called now, locks or something like that, where basically you just get stuck in a, a infinite loop and the game doesn't progress. And it's, yeah, they're banned for that reason. But we've got a super rare, a hollow, and that's very nice. So that's cool. Pretty cool stuff. Morale boost. Oh, I definitely need that while jump hunting. The final countdown, the Joker's been done to death so i'll stop doing it but yeah that was always a good card and um i think it's is it limited to one was it unlimited i can't remember i think it's been limited before in the past but yeah cool card that and incandescent ordeal uh it's used to ritual summon the legendary flame lord because you know what else is going to do that probably his house insurance right okay when he has to pay for it right 
Fairer Servant. I used to like this boost pack as well, primarily to try and get Thousand Eyes Restrict. But so far, we've only had two rare. Oh no, we had a super rare. We had a Butterfly Dagger Elmer, so that's always good. Let's see if we can get some more hollows, shall we? Probably not. Seven completed, which I remember in the anime series is what Bandit Keith used for his slot machine, and he cheated by hiding them up his sleeve. Naughty, naughty. Darkfire Soldier number one. He's proud of it, and he will always be number one, because if you've got this guy coming towards you with flames and a big, giant, hook scythe forget the name of that type of weapon, no, I know it's from India and it's a curvy, swordy thing, you're going to leave him at number one. Armoured Glass. You know, it's better than nothing, I guess. And another rare, Mad Sword Beast. Very nice. And another super rare. we got a Fairy Meteor Crush. Pretty cool. When a monster equipped with this card attacks with an attack that's higher than the defense of the defense position monster, inflict the difference as battle damage. So in other words, it does piercing damage. Very cool. I don't ever remember getting a hollow version of this back in the past. I always got a common version, so it must have been in a starter deck. There's another card, Thousand Eyes Idol, which you needed to fuse with Relinquish to give yourself uh, Thousand Eyes Restrict. Always like that card, even though it's completely useless. It looks cool and is. Island Turtle. No turtle is an island, but no island is a turtle either, at least as far as we're concerned. The all-seeing white tiger. He can see right through me and you, and then he just buggers off and goes and eats some meat somewhere. And then we have the Garuchin Kuwagata. I don't know either. But two hollows. Not bad at all. Right. Next one. The Spell Ruler, which is also known as Magic Ruler. Until eventually the... Uh, Kana uh, I don't know if it was Konami, actually. I think it was Upper Deck, who used to make these cards before it went to Shonen Jump and then Konami. I don't know what it is these days. Um, they changed it because apparently I think it was too familiar with Magic the Gathering. And people were getting confused or upset. Or Magic the Gathering were going to sue them for using the word magic in their card game. Well, I don't bloody know. Either way, it changed from Magic Card to Spell Card. I wasn't fussed, really. But I have to be honest, I grew up with Magic Card. But it doesn't matter. At least to me, anyway. It does to others, though. We have the toll, which you have to pay to live. And if you don't, I guess you just stand around till you die, I guess. Uh, Minar, who's not really uh, significant or minifericic. Uh, I can't even speak properly about that one. That was a failed joke. Taylor of the Fickle. Fairy's Hand Mirror. Hyozanryu. And no hollow this time. Never mind. But yeah, it's my luck. If this was somebody else's channel who opened these exact same boxes, like Simply Unlucky or Cybernote or whatever, they would be getting hollows. But because it's me, I get all the bad luck. But then again, it means they get good luck, so it works out, I suppose. A dragon created from a massive diamond that sparkles with blinding light. Ah, he is blindingly awesome. But also, not all completely out of diamond. Unless the tusks and the horns and the... The, the toe, the nails he's got a dial. Oh, I don't know, I'm just talking rubbish. Rising air currents. It'll rise so fast you'll go into space and freeze to death. Psychic Kappa. He uh, does what he does. The Commencement Dance. Very beautiful, but also reveals something quite nasty. And Magical Labyrinth, which in the anime series uh, they used in the first season of the Paradox Brothers to change the labyrinth. So... It just did stuff. What does it do? Equip Labyrinth Wall with this card. If you tribute Labyrinth Wall, equip this card, you can special wall shadow from your deck. It's a bit slow and pointless, but it was cool back then. Right, uh, second from last, Penultimus, Metal Raiders. Always wanted to pull a Gate Guardian. Never pulled Gate Guardian, the secret rare. I pulled a Thousand Dragon, which is the other secret rare, I do believe. If I could pull a Gate Guardian now, that would be grand. But will I? Nope. Luck will not be a lady for me. It'll be some horrible, putrid, nasty, dying cat in the corner of fleas. <sighs> Never mind. Anyway, sorry, I feel sorry for the cat, really. Uh, we have Morin Finn. He's not on morphine, as far as I can tell. Electric Lizard. Eel, maybe. Ground Attacker Bugroth. Fair enough, that's pretty cool. The Crass Clown. Yeah, he's a clown, all right. And then... I used to get this rare all the time. The Mylas Radiant. Who gave a toss about him? No one. And then we get Bikuri, Bikuri Box. A Bikuri Box. I don't know how to pronounce that. But that was uh, the killing card that uh, uh, Pegasus uses to beat Seto Kaiba in the, um, in the anime series. Pretty cool. Just summons it though. It wasn't a fusion monster. Sword of Deep Seated. Um, deep Seated what? Anger, hatred, love, passion. I don't know. He looks lovely to me. Thunder Dragon. You know, he's quite good, actually, apparently. He's got a lot of support these days. So this is actually pretty uh, pretty good stuff. And then, of course, we have a Yadu Karu, which nobody cares about. But he looks cool anyway. All right, then. Last but not least, the Legend of Blue Eyes White Dragon. Pull a Blue Eyes. That would be grand. But no, we'll probably pull Aquamador or... Uh, don't know what else could we pull. There's other rares that I've pulled back in the past. Maybe a Magician of Faith. Who knows? Let's see. 
next we have the wasteland very very nasty the petite dragon very very cute the two mouth dark ruler because i guess he has trouble swallowing with his one mouth and he needs a second mouth to make sure he has chewed it properly otherwise he gets irritable bowel syndrome the basic insect don't underestimate him he may be basic but he knows it well and then we get Goblin's Secret Remedy. Isn't that nice? And that's your lot. So we've got Spike Cedra, Urube. Keep bending the cards here slightly. I apologise about that. Terror the Terrible. Uh, just uh, That's basically my luck. Personify that. That's what my luck would be. If my luck had a manifestation, it would be that guy. And he'd be laughing his fucking head off all the time. And last but not least, we have our mail. Amen. And there you go. So that is that. So you think... Ha! We've got another one to open. <laughs> oh, I'm so sad. Yeah. Let's have one more crack, shall we? And I promise you this is the last one. I'm just going to go straight to the booster packs, get them out, open them up, and let's see what we get. And then we'll do a summary at the end. So back in a moment. Okay, round two. Let's see what we can get this time then. Will we get anything good? Probably not. But let's see. You never know. You can be pleasantly surprised. Right then, we have Chomp Man, the Desperate Outlaw. Basically, he's very hungry for a burger because all they've been feeding him is porridge in prison all these years. Recycle, which we should all be doing, really, for an environmentally friendly world. And yet, somehow, we still can't do that even when we try. The thing in the crater. It's lava. There's not really much more to it than that. Primal seed, once again. And compulsory evacuation device, which isn't a bad trap card, actually. So that's always cool. And no hollow this time, once again. But we get the skull marker ladybug. Actually, I don't think it wasn't too bad, was it? Oh, it's increased your life points by a thousand points. Eh, it's, it's got some minor stuff. Be gone, Nave! Go! Please, if you haven't left this video yet, please do now to keep your sanity intact. The torpedo fish, otherwise you'll get shot with that and you'll die. And then a hero will emerge from you and make you the best person that ever existed. And there's my story. Right, Dark Crisis, come on, let's get some luck. Why are we only getting rares? Christ, two hollows, that's it. Crikey. Well, we got hollows from Dark Crisis last time, I think. Did we get hollows from Dark Crisis? I think we did. Right, Acrobat Monkey. Um, I'll take his word for it. Uh, Despair from the Dark. Oh, that's what I suffer every day. Desrook Archfiend, which um, kind of relates to me playing Resident Evil 2 Remake with the chess piece things that you have to find and put together. That guy, just to remind you, he's not to be bullied. And another rare, we've got Guardian Bow, which I don't think I've ever seen before, actually. Eh, interesting. And that's it, so no hollow again. But we've got Keldo. I think he's just confused that he was called that as a kid. Kelbeck. There you go. Keldo, meet Kelbeck. Kelbeck, meet Keldo. Go and have a relationship together. Uh, Non-spell casting area and the frozen soul. And that's what mine will be eventually when I die in the ninth level of Dante's Hell. Ah, Boo-hoo. Right, next one. Ferris Servant. Come on, let's get a hollow, please. All this video is doing and proving is my point. I have no luck. Right, come on. But I do have nice things happen. I haven't forgotten you, Dark Lord. You were very kind. Earthshaker. It used to be quite a good card in... Um, oh, it wasn't a good card, but it was a rare card in uh, Jewelers of the Roses. We used to change the arena and all that sort of stuff. Whereas this one, it selects two monster card attributes. Your opponent selects one of the two attributes and all and destroys all face-up monsters with attribute on the field. It's just too much effort, really. Solomon's Law Book. Skip your next standby phase. Yeah, I guess it can be useful. I never saw it in action, but you never know. Harpy's Brother. With eyes like a hawk and flying speed exceeding Mach 5, this monster is a master of the sky, but isn't actually included in the Harpies lineup. And another rare, we've got Appropriate. And that's that, so yeah, not good at all. Oh no, is that a hollow? Oh no, we did get a hollow! Hey, we got a gift for the Iron Knight, so I almost took you for granted, old chum. Well, that's not bad. And he's quite a good card, because uh, you couldn't equip any spell cards to him, and I think you could combine him with um, Butterfly Dag Elmer. And um, you can get an infinite lock in a certain situation. So there you go. We actually managed to get, I think, the main mechanism for the infinite lock. That was Butterfly Dagger Elmer. Well, that's something. I'll put that to the one side then. Bombardment Beetle. Um, yeah, they use them in wars. And I don't think they're that effective because it's a beetle for fuck's sake. It's too small. Spike Bot. Now, if they use that in wars, that would be pretty awesome, but also very dangerous. Cyber Falcon, he's from the future to remind you that America is still powerful. And of course, our good old friend Thousand Eyes Idol, he's always looking at something, but you're not sure what. Okay, three packs left. Let's just see if we can get an ultra rare at the very least. Spell Ruler, what can you give us? 
This used to be where all the tunes were. I used to love this booster pack set specifically for that because I loved tunes. It was good fun back in the day. Even though tunes are pretty much the worst archetype or one of the worst archetypes in the game, I love them to bits. Fairy's Hand Mirror. Peacock. I don't know. Very unoriginal name, but very handsome. Ancient One of the Deep Forest. I would be freaked if he came running out of me from a forest. I'll give him that. The Horn of Light, which we need now to get... A horn of the unicorn. Well, I suppose that goes together, I guess. So, Master equipped this card increased the second defense by 700 points. It was a good uh, equipped spell card. But when it got destroyed, uh, or sent from the field to the graveyard, so it doesn't even need to be destroyed. It just needs to be sent to the graveyard in whatever way or form. It goes back to the top of your deck. And that's our lot again. So, eat kaboon. I feel like doing that now. Getting swallowed and eaten to death. Uh, Kotudama is something. Screaming. Agony. Pain. Hell. Me in the future, who knows? Turtle Oath! I shall swear an oath to the turtles, never to eat them. And then I'll have three chainy things coming out of my mouth and it'll be horrific and remind me of Silent Hill. And then Umiruka! He is happy! He has reached the eureka moment that all dolphins are smarter than human beings. And then he left. And then with the following caption, thank you for all the fish. And that's the story of that. Right, two more packs. Metal Raiders, come on! Why am I so unlucky? I don't know. If somebody can answer me that in the comment section. I'd love that. Right. King of Yami Kari. He's kind of cool. I like him. Has he got a crown on his head? He's got a crown-shaped head. It'll do. Rainbow Flower. This monster may attack your prince like ones directly. He is not the supporter of the LGBTQ whatever it is community these days. Don't be fooled. Um, Castle of Dark Illusions, which always had that weird attack and defense data um, for some reason or data or numbers or whatever. And they used to do that in the early games and then they kind of scrapped that, I guess, because it made working out life point differences a little bit harder. We did get a Magician of Faith, though. That's not a bad rare. Select one spell card in your graveyard and add it to your hand. And a super rare Kazajin. Oh, well. Again, super rares. I'll take it. It's a Kazajin. It's one piece of Gate Guardian. I wish we could have had the Gate Guardian itself. But never mind. It's kind of cool. Okay. The Stim Pack, which I remember it gives your monster... Yeah, it gives your monster attack by 700 points, and then you lose 200 points each of its standby phases. Good for a quick kill, I guess. Launcher Spider! One of Bandit Keef's favourite cards, and he is pretty awesome, I might add. Again, they need that for warfare. The Cheerful Coffin. <laughs> yeah. I guess maybe that'll be the only time I am cheerful. <laughs> and share the pain. You know what? I don't wish that on anybody. I will keep the pain to myself. I only share it to you via video. So I am technically doing that, but trust me, it's a video. It is what it is. Which means, back to Blue Eyes. Let's see what rubbishy rare we get out of this one. I'm going to say there's two. I think there's Aquamador, Spirit of the Harp. I'm going to go with Spirit of the Harp. I think it was Spirit of the Harp or Lady of the Harp, something like that. It's not a bad card, it's got 2,000 defence. Level 4 monster, normal, or vanilla as they call it. But we have a legendary sword, so I should feel proud I am a legend in some way. And then I'll pick that up and break my back because I have no upper body strength whatsoever. The basic insect is back to remind you he's basic, but powerful. The silver fang, which looks more white than silver, but I'll take the word for it. Actually, is the fang silver in the artwork? They're not, they're yellow. You need to go to a dentist, son. Or brush your teeth. Ray and temperature combined together to make... Very mild, mediocre weather. And the two-pronged attack. Select and destroy two of your monsters and one of your opponent's monsters. And that's our lot. Really, really bad, ladies and gentlemen. I apologise. What a letdown. Oh, well, we finished with Taihon and Kumu Tuko and Drooling Lizard, who's ready to eat me after this video. And then a silver bone arrow to shoot that poison arrow into my heart. And I die. So, yeah, not very good, I'm afraid, ladies and gentlemen. I apologise. But it was a good journey nonetheless. And, you know, the English are always quite good at disappointment. So we end with our hollows as a recap. So we have Kazajin, which isn't bad, but it was a bit impractical. But, you know, powerful in the day. Gear for the Iron Knight is a good card. I like him. Butterfly Dagger Elmer and the Fairy Meteor Crush. And that's my whole life crushed. Well, I hope you enjoyed that horrible sway, the disappointments. But again, can I say thank you very much for watching as always. I really do appreciate it. I shall get normal videos back up soon. Uh, try and get one up today or tomorrow. I should hope so, at least when this video goes out. Um, or at the time of this video is recording even, I should say. Not when this video goes out, because that would be weird. And the autofocus is doing random things to the video. It might make you disorientated. So yeah, again, check out Dark Lord Kaiser's channel. Thank you very much, old chum, for your Pokemon cards. It was probably the best bit of this video, really. I should have just cut it off there. And I'll see you next time. And until then, bye for now. Have a good one.